So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every Friday and in today's DAX Fridays we're going to continue with our DAX battles. This time it is rank X versus top N. You all ask me what the difference is for the longest time and it is time, it is time, let's figure it out, shall we? Okay guys, there are some fundamental differences between rank X and top N. And it is one of the differences similar to the video that I did last Friday with a calculate and calculate table. So rank X returns a value while top N returns a table. And that is a technical difference between the two. So if you want to have a values row by row, you use rank. If you want to have a table that then you do something with a table, you use top N. I'm going to show you examples, don't worry. But it's not only that. So rank will rank things. We'll say, okay, this is the, whatever you ask them to do. So you say, okay, rank by sales, and then it will rank a list by sales, and then it will put one, two, three, four, five. That's the, what it returns a value. While top N will return you a table of whatever you tell them to do. So you say, okay, give me the top 10 of sales. Let's do an example. Easiest way. This is the Northwind data set. You have the um, file available for download on the Curve Download Center as usual. So let's get started. We, what we are going to do, because top N returns a table, you cannot put it, you can put it into a measure. We will talk about that in a second. But if you want to see what top N returns, you have to do it on a table because it is a table function. And I have a video explaining the difference between scalar functions and table functions and other functions. So make sure that you check it out. I will post a link. It will pop up here and down below. So top end. Are you ready? So let's say we want to have top end results. So the 10, the highest 10 sales for our order details table. So you are going to put order the table here, order details, and then you want to do it by sales. So give me the order details, you know, the lowest, this is going to do it, it's going to take the table, the lowest granularity and give you the top 10 items with the highest sales. And if you put it in there, this is the table that will result out of the top end calculations. So it gives the orders IDs, the products ID, the unit price, quantity, discount for sales. Let me put this descending. <laughs> descending. So you can see here that the highest sale we've ever had, it was for product ID 38 and it was $15,800 euros, whatever. Let's go and check it out. So if we go to the order tables or the detail table and we sort this descending, we should see the same thing. In this case, this is going to sort the entire table. We just sorted with top end, the top 10. Okay, but this is the entire table. So here you see the same thing, 38, 15.8, 15.8, 10, 10, 10. Okay, top end, that's what it does. Now, you can't use top end in a measure, but if you do that, you have to put a function that returns a value on the table that you selected. So you could, for example, go and use, give me the sales, the total sales of the top 10 most highest orders. So what you wanna do, for example, is to get the total sales of this quantity. And to do that, you would just go to new measure. And then you're going to, Top 10 sales. You put some X, for example, you can, you can do it in anywhere you like. And then you put sales here. So what you are saying is with this table that we've seen what the table is now, with this table top 10, give me the sum of sales. And then it will give it to you. You will go in here and then you will get a scalar value here, a number basically. And then it's 107,000. So if you put this together, yeah, it sounds like it is 100,000. So you see the difference. Now, if you would try to put top 10 just like that as a measure, 
is going to give you the error that says, hey, you're giving me a table. I'm expecting a value as a result. Okay, so that's as easy as that. Now, what happens with rank x? Rank x ranks things. It does not give you a table. From a table that you provide to rank, it will go through all the rows, sort them in whatever order you want, and then it will say, okay, this is the first one, second one, third one, right? So, let's put an example. Uh, we go to order details, new measure, and then we're going to put rank in there rank sales and then we're going to do rank x i have a dax friday some rank x so i'm not going to go into details of how this works because i've already done it if you are curious just check that video out i'll post the link and it will pop up somewhere in here so all the details and then sales right so now Take a look at this. I am going to take out already. We're going to create the same table that we had on top end. Order ID, product ID as a table, please. There you go. So order ID, product ID. We're going to put the sales so we can see them. And then we're going to put our ranking function, rank. And then we are going to sort this by rank on the other way, please. And then we have here number one. Do you recognize this number? Product ID 38. And then this is the order ID. If we would put these table in there, you know, the top end tables, you'll see that the first ones are the same. They, they have to be because, you know, this ranking the same thing. So rank, it ranks, it gives a value one, two, three of whatever table you specify, while top end will give you as a result a table with the top whatever of whatever you want. Was it clear? I hope so. I hope so because there are fundamentally two different functions altogether. One gives you a scholar, one gives you a table, one gives you a ranking, one, two, three, the other one gives you a table with the top something. So I hope this video helps clarify the difference between the two. And uh, it is Friday, so it is time to enjoy the weekend. Now I'm going to post here, <laughs> I never know what it is, a video about this difference between the scholar and the table. Go and check that out because it's going to help you a lot trying to understand the difference between the different functions. Often it's not only that, but that is often a good indicator of what the difference is between different functions. So time to start the weekend. I will see you again on Monday with another Power BI video. And uh, until then, as always, enjoy your weekend. Rest, take care, and bye-bye.